In the fast-paced arena of financial technology, where startups are born every minute, there is a constant race to innovate, disrupt, and capture the hearts and wallets of customers. But here is the harsh reality. Many of these brilliant fintech ideas, products, and services, despite their potential, never see the light of day or fail quite miserably. And as surprising as that may sound, one of the most common culprits is pricing. Yup, you heard me right. Pricing. The way you price your fintech offering can make or break your venture, no matter how groundbreaking your technology might be. You might remember the headlines from not too long ago when a certain fintech giant, Robinhood, faced a firestorm of controversy. Their commission-free pricing strategy, which was initially hailed as a game-changer in the world of investing, had its reputation tarnished overnight. Why? Their pricing model came under scrutiny. When the stock market went haywire, they hit pause on the trading of certain stocks like GameStop, and users were furious, feeling betrayed by the very platform that promised to democratize finance. Robinhood's poor pricing decisions and lack of transparency led to a PR nightmare and regulatory investigations. But why dwell on the past when we can learn from it? So in this video, we'll talk about the importance of aligning your pricing strategy with your business goals and customer expectations. We'll demystify the different pricing models from subscription and tiered pricing to dynamic and value-based models. By the end of this video, you should have the knowledge and tools to help make pricing decisions that can turn your fintech startup into a success story. If that sounds interesting to you, then let's jump in. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremy and if you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so because on this channel, I speak about fintech, digital transformation and agile strategy. Pricing isn't just another detail to sort out when it comes to fintech products. In fact, when it comes to any product, it's the foundation upon which the entire edifice of your financial technology startup stands. Getting your pricing strategy right requires deep research, thought and consideration. Pricing in fintech is like navigating a minefield, one wrong step and you could blow your startup dreams sky high. So it's not a decision to be taken lightly. Fintech pricing models are essential for several reasons. Number one, customer acquisition. Now attracting new customers is the lifeblood of any fintech startup. Your pricing model affects how easily you can acquire new customers and convince them to choose your fintech solution over others. A well-priced product can pique the interest of potential users, making them more likely to explore your offering. Moreover, the perception of value you create through your pricing can influence potential customers to take the leap and become paying users. So it's not just about getting customers in the door, it's about creating a pricing structure that entices them to stay and continue engaging with your fintech solution. The next is competitive advantage. In the fintech landscape, competition is fierce. There are countless players vying for the same pool of customers. Your pricing model can be your secret weapon in this battle. It makes your fintech offering stand out and gives you a competitive edge that draws in users. A well thought out pricing model can set you apart from competitors and become a significant part of your brand's identity. Think of it as your fintech's unique selling proposition or the reason why customers should choose you over alternatives. Next is profitability. Your ultimate goal as a fintech startup is to be profitable. Pricing models are the financial backbone of your business because they don't just determine how much you should charge for your product or service, but also how efficiently you can cover your costs and generate revenue. A well-calibrated pricing strategy can mean the difference between a struggling venture and a thriving, sustainable business. It's not just about setting the price, it's about ensuring your pricing strategy aligns with your financial goals and allows you to achieve profitability. And then there's scalability. Now, as a fintech startup, you're likely dreaming of growth and expansion and reaching a wider audience, 1 million customers, 10 million customers, or 100 million customers. But growth comes with complexity and scalability is a challenge that you need to be prepared for. Your pricing model needs to be scalable as well. It should be flexible enough to adapt to changing market conditions, the introduction of new features and products, and the addition of more customers. A pricing model that can't scale with your business can become a hindrance rather than an asset. Achieving scalability allows you to grow while maintaining financial stability, which is critical for long-term success. So in essence, 
Fintech pricing models are not just numbers on a spreadsheet. They are strategic pillars that hold your business up. They are the key to profitability, competitiveness, customer acquisition, and long-term sustainability. They are the foundation upon which your fintech startup success is built, making them a topic that no fintech entrepreneur can afford to ignore. So now that we know why it's important to pay attention to pricing models, let's explore the actual pricing model options with a few examples. To start off, we have the flat fee pricing model. Now this is pretty much the most common type of pricing model. Model. Customers are charged a fixed amount for a product or service regardless of usage. For example, a bank charges customers a fixed monthly account maintenance fee for a basic checking account regardless of the number of transactions. A digital wallet would be an example of a fintech product that employs this type of pricing model. So a digital wallet charges users a flat monthly fee for access to its features such as mobile payments, budgeting tools, and bill payment services. Next is the subscription pricing model. Now this is where customers pay a recurring fee at regular intervals for example, weekly, monthly, or annually, to access a service or use a product. It's typically ideal for products that offer continuous access to premium features, ongoing services, and financial products that offer consistent value. So a financial news website, for example, which offers premium content and charges subscribers a monthly fee for access to exclusive articles and market analysis. Or in fintech, robo-advisory services tend to leverage this pricing model, where the robo-advisory platform offers automated investment investment management services to clients in exchange for a monthly subscription fee. The advantages of this pricing model are that it offers predictable recurring revenue, seeks to encourage customer retention and loyalty, and provides the ability to plan and scale based on subscriber numbers. Next is the tiered pricing model. Now, in this pricing model, customers are charged different prices based on the level of service or usage. Typically, higher tiers come with more features or benefits. The products or services offered have varying levels of functionality and serve customers with different needs. So for example, a stock trading platform like Robinhood would offer three tiers of service, i.e. basic, intermediate, and advanced, or basic, standard, and premium, with each tier having different pricing and features and catering to different business needs. This this pricing model typically allows a fintech to appeal to a wider audience, maximizing revenue potential by catering to the different segments of customers. Next is a freemium pricing model. Now this pricing model is another interesting one. It gets its name by combining the words free and premium if you hadn't already figured that out. It essentially has two tiers. So the free tier is often designed to provide essential functionality to users, making it valuable and attractive to a wide audience. In the context of fintech, this might include basic account management, access to a limited number of financial tools with minimal or no fees. Now, in addition to this free offering, there is also a premium or paid tier with advanced features, services, or benefits. Users who upgrade to the premium tier typically pay a subscription fee or a transaction action fee for specific services. In fintech, this could include features like real-time market data, in-depth financial analysis tools, priority customer support, or access to advanced investment options. The goal of the freemium model is to attract a large user base through the free offering while monetizing the platform by converting a portion of those users into paying customers who value the added features or convenience provided by the premium tier. So Mint, for example, is a budgeting and personal finance app that offers a free version that helps users track their expenses, create budgets, and view financial insights. Then Mint also offers premium features like credit monitoring and investment tracking through their paid service called Mint Premium. Next is the dynamic pricing model. The dynamic pricing model is also known as the personalized or variable pricing model. Now, In this model, prices are adjusted in real time based on various factors such as demand, supply, customer behavior, and market conditions. Now, This model is made possible by the availability of vast amounts of data and advanced algorithms used by fintech companies to determine optimal pricing. So there are key aspects like individualized pricing where there's a unique pricing structure for each customer. So two customers using the same fintech service may be charge different prices based on their specific characteristics and behaviors. So for example, a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform like Lending Club often uses dynamic pricing to determine the interest rates borrowers will pay based on their credit worthiness and other factors. In short text, like Root Insurance uses telematics and data from a smartphone app to assess an individual's driving behavior and determine car insurance rates based on how safe a driver you are. The one thing about dynamic pricing that you need to stay cognizant of is the fact that it raises questions about transparency and fairness because consumers worry about the potential discrimination in pricing practices 
and regulators and consumer advocates often monitor it quite closely. So it's important to emphasize transparency and openness with this pricing model. Next is the bundling pricing model. Now, In this pricing model, multiple products or services are packaged together and offered at a single consolidated price, often at a discount compared to purchasing them individually. For example, a credit card company bundles travel insurance, roadside assistance, and purchase protection into one premium credit card package at a fixed annual fee. Or an online bank bundles checking, savings, and investments accounts into one package with a fixed monthly fee, offering convenience and savings to customers. Now, bundling aims to simplify financial management for customers and create a more comprehensive financial solution while potentially enhancing customer loyalty and creating revenue streams for the fintech company. Next is the price skimming model. In the price skimming model, a tech company launches a new financial software product at a high price and then gradually reduces it over time as more competitors enter the market. Now, this approach is typically adopted to maximize revenue from early adopters and customers who are willing to pay a premium for a new innovative offering. And price skimming in fintech can be particularly relevant when introducing innovative financial technology products such as advanced financial analytics software, robo-advisory services, or cutting edge mobile banking features. By initially pricing the product higher and then gradually reducing it, fintech companies can strike a balance between capturing premium revenue and expanding their customer base. It's important to note that the success of a price skimming strategy in fintech depends on factors like the product's uniqueness, the market demand, and the company's ability to maintain customer interest and loyalty as the price drops. Now, additionally, the fintech needs to carefully plan the timing and the extent of price reductions in order to avoid alienating early adopters while attracting a broader customer base. And then we have geographic pricing models. Now, this pricing model refers to a pricing strategy that takes into account the location of the geographic region of a customer when determining the cost of fintech products and services. Now, this pricing approach recognizes that economic conditions, regulatory environments, and customer behaviors can vary significantly from one geographic area to another. By considering these variations, fintechs can tailor their pricing to align with local market dynamics and customer preferences. For example, international money transfer service providers like Wise, Revolut, and PayPal offer customers the ability to send money across borders to recipients in different countries, and their pricing often varies based on the geographic regions involved. Now, it's important to note that the effectiveness of a geographic pricing model in fintech depends on the company's ability to assess the local market conditions accurately and implement pricing strategies that resonate with customers in each region. Additionally, fintech companies must remain compliant with local financial regulation and adapt their operations to meet regional requirements. So friends, pricing models are the compass guiding fintech startups towards profitability, sustainability, and customer satisfaction. Now, the list I've shared is by no means means exhaustive and you should do your own research to find out all pricing options available to you. But remember that the choices you make in pricing are not just financial decisions, they are strategic ones that can shape the destiny of your fintech venture. I hope you found this video valuable and if you did, remember to hit the like button and let me know which pricing model you would prefer for your fintech product or service. Have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys!